My name is Fred Wagner and I am a zookeeper here at the Memphis Zoo. I work throughout the West Zone, primarily in cat country. There are a lot of locks. All right. I am just picking up crap. Been um, checking for down, you know, if there wasn't anything last night, but if there had been a storm, you know, are there any down trees? Is the hot wire all standing? Are there branches hanging on it? Just checking the lot in the morning. Morning. Good morning, lions. Tavos. What did you do? What did you do? Look what I brought. Most of the cats do not like strangers back here. So I don't really know how they're gonna react. Probably not in a positive way, maybe. I don't really know. Got some visitors this morning. This is their, he's displaying. He's showing off pretty much in here. We'll wait till he calms down just a little bit. They get, in the morning, they get lots of uh, kale and broccoli, and cucumbers, um, some popcorn mix that we scatter out in the grass, so they have to kind of hunt for it. <laughs> That's Tom Beck's breakfast bag. He needs a little extra incentive to go outside. There's some sunflower seeds and some oatmeal, just something a little different, a little reward for going outside. All right, so we're all gonna go in now. I'm Sandy Shoemaker with the Memphis Zoo. We're in the orangutan building. So I take care of all of the, the great apes and some of the smaller monkeys. I mean, I've always loved animals. I watched um, like The Tonight Show and animals would come on The Tonight Show and I always wanted to be that person because I thought they lived with all those animals. <laughs> I didn't know that they just were hosts. So we'll save the rest for tonight. She can have the rest of her juice. And once I got started with gorillas and primates, that's all I wanted to do. They're so smart and you build that relationship with them and they have a sense of humor and sometimes they get the best of you but you just have to take it in stride and realize that they're very smart independent beings that don't really have a whole lot of choices. So when they choose to do something different it's kind of their way of showing okay we do have some choices still. My name is Susie Quinlan Zawadeski and um, I'm a China exhibit keeper. We have white cheek gibbons here and also Asian small clot otters. We have nine of those. I've been here for about eight and a half years and it's the best thing I've ever done. Sunday. Hey. <laughs> he is telling you guys. <laughs> Isn't that hysterical? <laughs> How are you real? Who does that? They're pretty acclimated to us and pretty used to us. And For a lot of the animals, I mean, want some contact. I usually get these guys outside on the exhibit and then I'll go feed the langers and, because they're over there waiting, you know, for breakfast. There's pins on these doors, so it's just not one padlock to got to go through it's kind of a procedure to get everything unlocked here. You guys ready? We got nine at the door. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Come back in. Dante, would you move, dude? We've kind of made this uh, little door frame smaller so the gibbons won't get in while we're shifting these guys out. There she goes. Part of zookeeping right now is geared towards training your animals, and that's mental stimulation for them, and not just feeding them every day. And, and you know, it's so much more than that. It's a lot more than that. You see your hand. You see your hand. Just hold it. You see your hand. 
want you to hold it for a minute. There you go. You're a good girl. Plus our emotional bond with these guys is, it's just, you know, we love them. I mean, we do, it's just, we do. <laughs> I love them, I love them. <laughs> what are you doing? I get completely different reactions from these, from these cats in the mornings when I'm alone. Kila, that is not a good girl. She's like, I don't care. I mean, we're really not allowed to take people back here anyways. I mean, if they were used to people, but we just don't really have anybody ever back here. Let's go visit the cougars. People always think that the lions are um, freaking out because they're loud like that. They're always loud like that. They're a little upset, but they're not really freaking out. Lions are just loud. Always. And Savannah's just doing that. She does that every morning. That's not because of you guys. What's the matter, Clint? Look, I brought people. I know, that's, that's how you feel about it. He can reach through, all the little cats can reach through probably a foot. And there's, there's Rob. And there's Mickey. She'll reach through and get you. And Seattle, what are you doing, Speaks? You sweetheart? My little girl. I've been working with her since she was like this big. As soon as she was weaned from the hospital and they sent her down here. Is that right? Well, tell me about it. So she's like eight now. Is that right? Wow. You know, I know Seattle. I've worked with her for years. You know, I'd always thought, oh, wouldn't it be great to have a pet cougar? And then as you get older, you're like, yeah, that's really not such a good idea. But I can take care of them. I can come in and then I can go home and have my weekends free and not worry about who's going to take care of her. But if you had her at home, who are you going to get to feed her when you want to go out of town? The neighbor lady that has a cat? I mean, it's, she's going to eat the neighbor lady. People are going to come and take care of her, and I can come in and see her, and then I can go on vacation or go away, and she's not my responsibility at night. Someone else can pay for the food bill. back and I'm gonna check all my locks and then we'll be out of here. Okay. You just have to be extra paranoid especially if you're working with these dangerous animals because you build that relationship with them but they would still hurt you if they feel scared or they're out of their element. They could. It's just unpredictable. They might not, but it's very unpredictable. So we just never want to be in the same space as them. It's kind of a happy noise that he's making right now. Sometimes he chooses not to go outside and then he's mad at me, even though it's his choice. You have to be part psychologist to work primates. Go outside? Hold on. That's the exterior door. Would you go outside or you can't actually be interested in all this? Are you? Good boy. Are you serious? You're coming back in? Seriously? Go out there and entertain the people. You know, there's a lot of people that 
that you know zoos or you know animal activists and zoos are horrible and animals should be free. We spoil them crazy. There's so much attention on enrichment and conservation now at zoos. It's not like it used to be. A huge part of our day is making sure that these guys are stimulated and have things to do. The vet care is, you know, top of the line. We're educating the public. If they don't see animals and learn to, and learn to appreciate them and love them, then they're not going to care enough to conserve them. When I was a swing keeper, one of the days of the week I would go down and work on the farm, and at that time we were walking the dairy cows through the public because we were trying to get them acclimated to people and I was walking my cow past this little girl and she looked up and she said what is that and I was like really and I mean it wasn't even you know a Brahma bull any you know bizarre breed of cow or anything it was just a cow and I was like you've got to know what a cow is and they talk about these animals these captive animals being ambassadors and they are they really are that's what these guys got to do so the future generations will Know, can know what these animals are and have an appreciation for them.